Hello guys, welcome to Yesta Technical Channel. Today our topic is TCP/IP model. First of all, why do we need the TCP/IP network model? Actually, there are many ways to communicate between process on the same devices, such as pipes, message queues, shared memory, signals. But for communication between process on different devices, network communication is needed. And since devices are diverse, a common set of network protocols is needed to be compatible with a wide variety of devices. This is where TCP/IP comes into existence. This network model is layered, with each layer having its own responsibilities, and we will describe each layer separately. What we have direct access to is the application layer, where the applications we use on our computers or mobile phones are implemented. When two applications from different devices need to communicate, the application passes the data to the next layer, which is the transport layer. Therefore, the application layer only needs to focus on providing application functions to the user, such as HTTP, FTP, DNS, and SMTP. The application layer is not to care how the data is transported. Similar to when we send a package, we only need to hand it to the person who is responsible for transporting the package. We don't need to care how the package is transported. And the application layer works in the user state, while the transport layer and below layer works in kernel state. User state and kernel state are concepts in the operating system, so we won't extend them too much here. But we will explain the differences between them in a future video. Package from the application layer are passed to transport layer, which provides network support for the application layer. There are two transport protocols in the transport layer: TCP and UDP. TCP is called transmission control protocol, and most applications use TCP as the transport layer protocol, such as HTTP. TCP has a lot more features than UDP, such as data sequencing, guarantee delivery, and time of data retransmission. All of which are designed to ensure that package can be reliable transmitted to each other. UDP is relatively simple, and it is only responsible for sending package and doesn't guarantee that they will reach each other. But it is relatively better in real time and more efficient in transmission. The data that an application needs to transmit can be very large and difficult to control if transmitted directly. So when the packet side at the transport layer it says MSS, which is TCP maximum message segment length, the packet will be sliced into different sections. This way, even if a section is lost or corrupted, only that one section needs to be reset instead of resending the whole packet. In TCP protocol, we will refer to each section as a TCP segment. When the device is the receiver, the transport layer is responsible for passing the package to the application. But there may be many applications on a device receiving or transmitting data, so a number is needed to distinguish the applications, which is the port number. For example, port eighteen is usually used for web server, also with eighteen eighty eight, and port twenty two is usually used for remote logging server. Each tab bar in the browser is a separate process, and the operating system assigns temporary port number to this process. Since the port number is carried in the transport layer message, the receiver can identify to which application the message is sent. The transport layer may be thought of as being responsible for transferring data from one device to another. In fact, it is not. The actual scenario of the network link is. Intricate. We don't want the transport layer protocol to deal with too many things. We just want it to serve the application layer well, so that it can be used as a medium for data transmission between applications to help achieve application to application communication. And the actual transmission function is left to the next layer, which is the internet layer. The internet layer most often uses the IP protocol. 
which takes the transport layer message as the data part and assembles them into IP messages with IP pack headers. If the size of an IP message exceeds the MTU, it will be fragmented again to get an IP message that will be allowed to send to the network. The internet layer is responsible for transferring data from one device to another. And with so many devices in the world, how do they find each other? Therefore, the network layer needs to have numbers that distinguish the devices. For the IP version 4 protocol, the IP address is 32 bits, divided into four segments of 8 bits each. Although IP addresses can differentiate devices, it is particularly troublesome to address them. Therefore, the IP address needs to be divided into two meanings. One is network ID, which is responsible for identifying which subnet the IP address belongs to. Another one is host ID, which is responsible for identifying different hosts under the same subnet. How is it divided? It needs to be combined with the subnet mask to figure out the network ID and host ID of the IP address. For example, see this IP. In the tail, you see a slash 24. Slash 24 means the subnet mask, which is 24 ones in binary. Once you know the subnet mask, how do you calculate the network ID and host ID? The network ID and host ID can be obtained by byte-wise operations of 10.100.122.2 and 255.255.255.0 in a binary mode. Then in the addressing process, the same network ID is matched first before going to the corresponding host. In addition to addressing compatibility, Another important compatibility of IP protocol is routing. In the actual scenario, two devices are not connected by a network cable, but by many gateways, routers, switches, and other network devices. Then many paths of the network are formed. So when a pack reaches a network node, it needs to decide which path to take next through the routing. After the IP header is generated, it is then hand over to the network access layer to add the MAC header in front of the IP header in encapsulated into a data flame to be sent to network. Ethernet doesn't determine the destination of network packet in the same way as IP protocol, so a new matching method must be used to send packets to their destinations, which is what the MAC header does. The MAC header is the header used by Ethernet, and it contains information such as the MAC address of the receiver and sender. In conclusion, TCP IP networks are usually divided into four layers from top to bottom, application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and network interface layer. Alright guys, that's what we have today. Today we talk about the TCP IP model and how many layers they have and how each layer works. Hope you like this video.